Hello everyone, uh, my name is Saurabh Tiwari, I am PhD student in, at IIT Bombay. I am also TA of this course. Uh, in the previous lectures, you have studied about the uh, various type of uh, various type of hydrogen storage uh, materials, uh, for example, complex hydrides and the metal hydrides. In the metal hydrides also you have learned different type of metal hydrides that is being used for the hydrogen storage. For example, uh, AB2 type of metal hydride, AB5 type of metal hydride. In the today's lecture, we have, uh, we have discussed about the design and development of metal hydride hydrogen storage. So, uh, if, if we start with the metal hydride for hydrogen storage, we have to understand how the hydrogen is actually being stored in the metal hydride. Uh, initially, the hydrogen molecule will, will adsorb on the metal hydride lattice, then the hydrogen molecule will dissociate into atoms. Uh, this uh, then hydrogen atom uh, after dissociation of the hydrogen atom, the hydrogen atom will occupy a lattice space uh, uh, inside the metal hydride lattice, uh, metal hydride lattice, and finally after uh, after occupying a lattice site, it will ultimately diffuse into metal and form metal hydride phase. It is also important to see the reaction uh, of the metal hydride when the metal when, when the metal hydride will react with the hydrogen, it will it will produce metal hydride and the heat is also generated during the during this process. This is the process of absorption. After that there are two process that is being done for the metal hydride hydrogen storage. The first is the absorption, the second is the desorption process. The hydrogen uh, during the absorption process, the hydrogen will uh, supply to the metal hydride bed at a pressure that is, uh, that is higher than the equilibrium pressure of metal hydride. In the previous lectures we have studied about the equilibrium pressures which is a temperature dependent quantity. So during the absorption process when the hydrogen will, uh, will supply to the metal hydride, it will absorb inside it, it, it is an exothermic process. So the heat is being generated inside the metal hydride reactor. During the desorption process when the, uh, when the absorbed hydro we require this uh, absorbed hydrogen, we will supply heat to it. Uh, after supplying heat, this will dis, uh, this hydrogen that is, uh, that is absorbed inside it will come out from the metal hydride, uh, metal hydride reactor. For the desorption process, it is important that the equilibrium pressure of metal hydride needs to be higher than the outlet pressure. Now the main driving force that I am, that I am talking about, the main driving force is the uh, difference between the equilibrium pressure and the outlet pressure for the desorption process. And for the absorption process, the difference between the supply pressure and the equilibrium pressure is the main driving force. Now uh, we have seen from here that it is an exothermic process it, it, and it is an endothermic process. So, it, so the heat that is being generated during absorption process need to be uh, removed from the metal hydride reactor. In the desorption case, we need to supply this heat to uh, metal hydride reactor. So coming to the uh, coming to the heat transfer issue in metal hydride. So uh, uh, as I am saying that the uh, when the hydrogen is absorbed in, inside the metal hydride reactor, the, there will be there will be generation of heat during absorption process. After absorption, it will increase the uh, metal hydride reactor temperature inside the metal hydride reactor. Uh, this increment in the temperature will increase the equilibrium pressure. If the equilibrium pressure increases, the difference between the main driving force that is the uh, difference between uh, supply pressure and the equilibrium pressure will reduce and the reaction will stop. In the case of desorption process, when the desorption start, there will be cooling effect during desorption which will decrease the temperature of metal hydride reactor which will decrease the equilibrium pressure. Again, the difference between the equilibrium pressure and the outlet pressure reduces and the reaction stops. So during the absorption process, we have to remove heat from air to maintain the equilibrium pressure and during the desorption pressure, we have to supply heat to maintain this equilibrium pressure, which will ultimately maintain the driving force and the reaction will continue. Now we are supplying, we are supplying heat during desorption process and we are, uh, we are actually removing heat during the absorption process. So during this process, because the thermal conductivity of metal hydride lie in the range of 0.1 to 0.3 watt per meter Kelvin. This low thermal conductivity of metal hydride restrict the flow of heat inside the metal hydride reactor. So this will put forward the requirement of efficient heat transfer requirement inside the metal hydride reactor that is the prime 
requirement for the uh, efficient transfer of heat inside the reactor. Coming to the basic design of metal hydride, uh, metal hydride reactor, there are different parts of metal hydride reactor that need to be that need to be considered. The first is the hydrogen inlet. The hydrogen inlet will be supplied through a pipeline which is generally made up of SS316L material. The, uh, thus the hydrogen will then be absorbed inside the metal hydride reactor. During this process, there will be a filter of hydrogen gas inside it. The filter is actually being used to separate the metal hydride from hydrogen during desorption process. When the hydrogen is absorbed inside the metal hydride, there will be expansion of metal hydride. Uh, so, to compensate that expansion of metal hydride, we have to provide a expansion volume to the metal hydride reactor. Finally, there is a reactor wall. So, the reactor wall is also be very important that need to be considered to the, for the design of metal hydride reactor. So, the first and the foremost requirement for the metal hydride reactor is it should be such that it will hold a high pressure during absorption up to a range of 50 or 60 bar or more than that and during the desorption process it will also work into the vacuum pressure. Second important point for the consideration of reactor wall material is it should not be reactive to hydrogen and metal hydride. The third and the most, most important is the reactor material should be low in cost and it, it, it will be light in weight. Uh, so, these are the requirement for the reactor materials. Coming to the next is the we have to understand how much amount of hydrogen we need to store and accordingly what is the volume of metal hydride reactor that we need to consider. So, suppose we want to uh, store a x gram of hydrogen inside the uh, inside metal hydride reactor and we have choose a metal hydride which is having a gravimetric capacity of g percent. It, it will be 1.4 or 1.58 percent for LANI5, for MG2 ni it is generally lie into in the range of uh, 3.4 to 3.5 percent. So, accordingly the gravimetric capacity will be selected. Now, the amount of metal hydride required to store this uh, hydrogen is around is, is calculated by this formula. Now, we have the amount of uh, we have amount of metal hydride, we know the density of metal hydride, re, uh, metal hydride. So, the volume of metal hydride will be calculated by this formula. Okay. Now, the next step is because the metal hydride is a porous, porous material, so there will be porosity that is that need to be accompanied in the volume. So, the por if the porosity of metal hydride is, is P and the expansion volume after absorbing hydrogen is around Z percent, so the final volume of the metal hydride reactor will be calculated by this formula. After calculating the volume of metal hydride reactor, if we know the length and the diameter ratio or some other formulas uh, to uh, other, other requirement of the uh, metal hydride reactor, from there we will calculate the dimension of metal hydride reactor. Generally, cylindrical shapes are used for the metal hydride reactor. Coming to the next slide is, we have to define the equation which will defining the process inside the metal hydride process during absorption and desorption. Uh, so, first and the foremost is, when the hydrogen is absorbed inside the metal hydride reactor, there will be generation of heat inside it. So, the trans, so the temperature will change of the metal hydride will change accordingly. So, the first equation which will define the which will define the change in temperature is the energy equation, which will define then the temperature with respect to time will change as the hydrogen is absorbed. So, this term the, the first left the second term in the left side will denote the advection term, which is when the uh, hydrogen will, uh, will start flowing inside the metal hydride reactor, there will be some heat flow due to convection also. So, this term will define that. The right, the first term in the right side will define the conduction that is being happening inside the metal hydride reactor. K effective is the effective thermal conductivity of metal hydride because when the metal, uh, when the hydrogen is, uh, is absorbed inside the, inside the metal hydride, there are two, two materials now. The first is the gas which is, uh, which is in the porous, in the porous uh, porosity of E and the remaining portion of the porosity in the, there will be uh, metal hydride. So, the effect, effective thermal conductivity will be calculated by this formula. Now, it is important to note that uh, the velocity of hydrogen that is flowing inside the metal hydride reactor is very low. So, generally when we are developing mathematical modeling or some uh, or we are doing calculations generally this term will be uh, is not that much significant. But for, for the practical for, but for the practical application we, will, we need to consider this uh, term also. Now, when the hydrogen is absorbed inside the metal hydride reactor, there will be change in density of metal hydride that will be that will be given by the mass equation of bed. Finally, 
when the, the amount of mass that is being absorbed inside the metal hydride reactor is calculated by this formula and the mass of hydrogen dissolved is calculated by this formula. So, this amount of mass absorb, uh, absorption and desorption will depend on the uh, activation energy of material. So, this is it is actually depend on some of the material property, it will also depend on the uh, it is on the for other parameters also like supply pressure, equilibrium pressure uh, and the density of material is also important. When this reaction will happen, there will be reaction constant of these also. So, these are to the reaction constant. In the previous lecture taken by Professor Pratibha Sharma, uh, she will define that the equilibrium pressure will depend upon the enthalpy and the entropy of reaction. Uh, so, this is the formula for the equilibrium pressure that we calculate. Now, there is a, there is a uh, heat capacity also equi uh, equi uh, effective uh, heat capacity which will be calculated by this formula. Now, if we start designing the, if we start to design the metal hydride reactor, the first and the foremost thing is that for what application this metal hydride reactor is being used. So, for the most important thing of metal hydride is it will, uh, there is a wide range of temperature and the, uh, there are different type of metal hydride available in market which will work for a wide range of temperature. So, if we work for the, uh, the, the main applications of metal hydride reactor is for heat pump, for vehicular application for thermal storage systems, uh, for refrigeration, for heat transformer also, for hydrogen transport it will be used and for fuel cell integration also for continuous supply of electricity. So, if we, if we are able to define the application of metal hydride reactor, we are able to uh, know the working temperature and the pressure range uh, for which the, for particular application. After knowing the temperature and the pressure range, we will also need to define what is the amount of hydrogen that need to be stored inside the metal hydride reactor. Accor uh, from the working temperature and the pressure range, we are able to select the metal hydride. From the metal hydride, we will calculate the volume of metal hydride reactor from the amount of hydrogen to be stored. Okay, the volume of calculation will be done in the previous slides. After the cal calculation of the metal hydride reactor, we will find the optimi uh, optimum L by D ratio. In the literature, it is found that uh, the general uh, generally optimum L by D ratio lie in the range of 3 to 4. From there we will be able to calculate the length and the di diameter of the metal hydride reactor if we are using a cylindrical metal hydride. After the selection of the metal hydride, we have to select the metal hydride reactor material. Suppose for vehicular application we require a uh, metal hydride reactor which, which has low in weight. So for that we, we, we need to select aluminum as the metal hydride reactor. But for the stationary application for thermo, for example thermal storage for uh, refrigeration, we will select SS316L or other, other material accordingly. After selecting the material, we will find the thickness of reactor. It will depend on the pressure in which we are working. Suppose we are working in a pressure range of 30 to 40 bar, we have to choose a factor of safety which lie in the range between 2 to 3 generally. After selecting factor, factor of safety, we will find out the what is the maximum pressure that we have to design our system for. F from there, uh, from the ASME pressure vessel code, we are able to calculate the thickness of reactor. After calculating the thickness of reactor, now we are able to develop a cylindrical reactor up to now. Then the main problem is the heat transfer inside the metal hydride reactor. So, we have to provide some heat transfer arrangement inside the metal hydride reactor for the fast absorption and desorption. Then we optimize the parameter for the particular selected heat transfer arrangement. This will complete our metal design of metal hydride reactor. Then we will perform. Then we will do the performance analysis of reactor. If it is if, if it is good for our for our for our particular application, then we'll go with that. Otherwise, we will follow the same step again. Now it is important to know what are the main parameters which is affecting the metal hydride reactor performance. So the first and the foremost is the supply pressure. So, the difference between the supply pressure and the equilibrium pressure, this is the case of absorption. When the, the difference in the supply pressure and the uh, equilibrium pressure is the main driving force which will uh, allow the hydrogen to get absorbed inside the metal hydride reactor. So, supply pressure need to be as high as possible uh, accordingly. So, the driving force will be as high as possible. Second is the L by D ratio. It is also a very important parameter because in, when we increase the L by D ratio, the thickness of the bed will reduce and this will reduce the conductive resistance inside the metal hydride bed which will further increase the heat transfer inside metal hydride reactor. 
The other and the foremost uh, uh, property is the thermal conductivity. If we somehow able to uh, uh, increase the effective thermal conductivity of metal hydride, so this increment in metal uh, thermal conductivity will allow us to have a greater uh, faster heat transfer inside the metal hydride reactor. The other important portion is the heat transfer coefficient. Heat transfer coefficient when the uh, when the heat transfer coefficient that when we are cooling the uh, metal hydride from the outer portion and if the heat transfer coefficient is higher there will be a faster removal of heat or faster supply of heat from the outer portion. So, this parameter is also very important. The other important parameter is the external temperature. The difference between the outer temperature and the metal hydride reactor temperature need to be as high as possible so that there will be a faster heat transfer. The other important parameter is the system cost. System cost is very important. Uh, because it needs to be as low as possible for, for, for a tool uh, for a particular application. Now, there are different ways to improve the heat transfer in metal hydride reactor. Uh, so, we have a, uh, so we have a, a, a heat equation which is generally defined by which is generally defined by uh, the, the uh, conductive term of the, uh, of the heat transfer and the convective term of heat transfer. Okay. Now, we want this heat transfer to be as fast as possible. So, we have to, uh, we have to look into these parameters. So, if we, if we look at initially look at the thermal conductivity of metal hydride. So, this metal hydride uh, thermal conductivity of metal hydride will be increased by having uh, by introducing metal forms. and ENG compacts, expanded natural graphite compact so that it will increase the effective thermal conductivity. So, the effective thermal conductivity formula that we already have E1 K1 plus E2 K2 plus E3 K3 plus like uh, uh, and E1 plus E2 plus E3 need to be equal to 1. So, as we increase the uh, as we introduce number of mat uh, thermal uh, material inside this metal hydride reactor with higher thermal conductivity. So, the effective thermal conductivity of metal hydride will increase and this will increase the heat transfer inside the metal hydride reactor. This will be hidden by using metal forms and ENG compacts. The second important parameter is the decrement of delta x. Delta x is, the, is actually providing a conductive resistance to the heat transfer. So, this will be this need to be as low as possible. So, this will be uh, uh, we are actually achieving this by uh, having the multitubular reactor. Suppose we have a reactor like this. Uh, so, we will convert this reactor into a multitubular reactor having multiple tubes inside of metal hydride inside it. So, with the uh, with, with having a multiple tubes, so we will actually reduce the thickness of uh, uh, thickness of metal hydride bed which will which will increase the heat transfer inside the metal hydride reactor. Another important parameter is the area of heat transfer. Generally area of heat transfer will be improved by number of uh, number of things. The first and the foremost is the using of fins. We can uh, uh, we can use fins inside metal hydride reactor. The second and the, uh, the second important is the we are also provided the heat transfer fluid jackets. And the third is using the cooling tube. So, these are the three things that we can use to increase the heat transfer area of metal hydride. So, generally the different type of fins are being used I, I will I, I will explain the next slide. Uh, other, imp, uh, other important parameter is the difference of uh, temperature difference. So, the temperature difference is done by suppose we have a metal hydride reactor and the temperature inside is Ts and the outlet temperature is T0. So, the temperature when we decrease this temperature for absorption, so this temperature difference will increase and this will result in higher heat transfer. The another important parameter is the heat transfer coefficient. So, the heat transfer coefficient will be increased by uh, using dif using by uh, using different type of heat transfer fluid and and by increasing the velocity of heat transfer fluid inside the tubes or what uh, of or different type of tubes that we are using. So, uh, if, if we will start with the increment in the uh, thermal conductivity of metal hydride. So, we have used metal form uh, like this. 
So, initially the thermal conductivity of metal hydride is 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 watt per meter Kelvin. Then we introduce a metal form having a higher thermal conductivity like aluminum form, copper form inside this metal hydride reactor. So, it will increase the effective thermal conductivity and which result in faster heat transfer. Similarly, the ENG compacts are also used. Uh, ENG compacts are first mixed with the metal hydride particles, then they, then, then will be the, then the uh, uh, ENG with the metal hydride will be compacted and this compact metal hydride will be used with which, which is having a higher thermal conductivity. The main problem with these uh, metal form and the ENG compact is they will occupy some volume inside the metal hydride reactor and it, it increase the weight and the size of the reactor also. So, if we are designing a metal hydride reactor, we, there must be a trade off between their effectiveness and de dead weight, they, what they add to the reactor. Coming to the increase in the heat on the surface area, there are different type of fins that will be used for the in, inside the metal hydride reactor or outside the metal hydride reactor. So, this is a metal hydride reactor. Uh, if, uh, 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 at the outer periphery there is a circuit, uh, there is a fins that will be attached to the metal hydride reactor which will increase the heat transfer surface area. This is a longitudinal type of fins, this is a transverse type of fins that is being used. The fin, what, we, we ultimately, fill will increase the heat transfer surface area which will result in faster uh, heat transfer inside the metal hydride reactor and finally, there will be faster absorption and desorption. The main problem with the use of fin is it will increase the weight of system. So, we have to, again there will be a trade off between uh, the weight and the uh, type of fins and the number of fins that we are using. A similar type of arrangement will also be used inside the metal hydride reactor to have a faster heat transfer. The other way to increase the heat transfer surface area is to, uh, is to introduce a water jacket at the outer periphery of metal hydride bed. So, the main, uh, so the main requirement is the provide, uh, it will provide the necessary condition for heat transfer during absorption and desorption it will increase the heat on surface area. The uh, water that is being used inside the metal hydride, the temperature of that water is also very important parameter that need to be considered. The main problem using a water jacket is it will provide heat transfer from the out for the outer periphery, but at the core in the core region the transfer of heat will be difficult. So, the transfer of heat in the core region is difficult for what uh, when we use water jacket. So, this problem will be solved by using cooling tube. So, the number of researchers using different type of cooling tube inside the metal hydride reactor. So, the main advantage of using cooling tube is they will provide uniform heating and cooling. Different type of cooling tubes are used such as helical tube, U shaped tube, straight tube with different arrangement like, uh, like uh, given in this figure. And, uh, uh, and then the, uh, the main problem with these type of cooling tube is they will occupy some volume inside the metal hydride reactor which will increase the size of reactor. Similarly, there is another way to improve the heat transfer uh, to increase the heat transfer inside metal hydride reactor which is by increment in the heat transfer coefficient. This can be done by increasing the velocity of heat transfer fluid or we have used different type of heat transfer fluid also for the, uh, for the system. Suppose we are using air and water for, uh, for as a heat transfer fluid. So, at the same velocity water will provide a higher heat transfer coefficient as compared to air. Coming to the combination, coming to the combination of methods, the uh, there are different type of combination that is being used, such as cooling tube along with the fins, uh, along with the metal form, along with the water jacket. So like the, there are four type of combination that is directly being used by different researcher. Uh, the may, the, the uh, advantage of this is it, this will provide a very fast absorption and desorption inside the metal hydride reactor due to faster cooling and heating. But the main problem is this will occupy a lot of space inside the metal hydride reactor and ultimately increases the weight of the system. This is up to the design of the system. Accordingly, there are different type of application of metal hydride reactors which will also decide what type of metal hydride we need to select, what, uh, what is the shape of the metal hydride, we require uh, enhancement in thermal conductivity of or not. These are different things that will be defined by the application of metal hydride reactor. So, suppose mat, uh, if we are using it for the refrigeration, so we have to look into the desorption process, not, not for the absorption. Because during desorption process, the temperature of metal hydride will decrease. So, for refrigeration process, we have to decide the desorption, uh, we have to consi concentrate on the desorption thing. When the temperature of metal hydride reduced, the reduction in the temperature, uh, temperature inside the metal hydride reactor 
will provide a, a higher heat a higher temperature difference between the inner and the outer portion of metal hydride so the, if the inner if the inner metal hydride reactor is at lower temperature and the outside temperature is at higher temperature so this will be extract heat from the space that need to be cooled and this will produce a cooling effect at the outer portion so the material will be the material that we need to select for refrigeration will be such that it will provide a cooling a cooling effect up to in a particular temperature range that we uh, that uh, that is required by particular application the other uh, the other application of metal hydride reactor is thermal energy storage uh, the main advantage of metal hydride is it will provide a temp a very wide temperature range so energy storage of around 700 to 800 degree is also possible with metal hydride reactor the metal hydride reactor uh, thermal energy storage have higher energy density compared to other like phase change material and sensibility storage system long term storage is also possible in metal hydride reactor the space requirement is also less compared to other energy storage system the other application of metal hydride reactor is the fuel cell integration in which the metal hydride reactor is uh, uh, is uh, incorporated with the fuel cell and the fuel uh, to continuously get the electricity so the important thing is the metal hydride reactor when connected with the uh, fuel cell is an auxiliary way to generate electricity the most important thing is the output of fuel cell is water vapor so ultimately this process is a uh, this process is a eco friendly system the main problem with this integration is the synchronization of hydrogen flow rate when the, the hydrogen that is coming out from the metal hydride we need to pro, we, we need to supply that hydrogen to fuel cell at a particular flow rate so this synchronization of uh, matter uh, of uh, hydrogen flow rate is very important in the fuel cell that is a that is one of the problem and that is uh, the research is going on in this field in the previous modules we have learned about the different methods of hydrogen storage at iit bombay we are working on solid state hydrogen storage we do work on different type of materials like uh, chemical hydride complex hydrides metal hydrides starting from dft studies to look at the different materials different alloys the possible dopants which can improve on to the performance of these materials to synthesizing these materials in small scale and then after studying doing a thorough characterization studying their hydrogenation dehydrogenation behavior we synthesize materials on large scale with these large scale materials being synthesized at iit bombay we use these materials for different systems now these hydrogen storage systems this development requires simulation then optimization of the reactor geometrical parameters their performance parameters and thereafter fabricating integrating these for various applications now in this particular module we are going to learn about the different experiments synthesis methods characterization of these hydrogen storage materials as well as systems this is a wet chemistry setup has been shown here we will be demonstrating the dehydrogenation of chemical hydride using water in presence of catalyst under stirring the material has been added to the solution now the chamber is closed shortly we will see the hydrogen generation now you can observe that the hydrogen is accumulating in the burette by water displacement method The instrument showing here is known as thermogeometric analyzer and it is coupled with mass spectrometry in short it's called TGAMS Now we will open the chamber the crucible is filled with a certain amount of sample now the chamber is being closed and we will run the program here in the screen you can see we are running the programming and the program has been started and it will take around 1 hour and 26 minutes upon completion of the experiment these are the pattern we got now we will further analyze the reading that we got a laboratory glove box is a sealed container that allows safe handling of the materials or chemicals sensitive to atmospheric exposure under a controlled inert atmosphere certain hydrided alloys are pyrophoric in nature meaning they are liable to ignite spontaneously on exposure with air loading and unloading of materials can be done through this anti chamber 
weighing and loading of the sample into the sample holders can be done inside the glove box to isolate the sensitive materials from the outside environment protect operators from hazardous materials inside the container or both the oxygen and moisture content of the glove box are monitored by the inbuilt sensors and are kept in check by using the purging technique depending on the size or volume of the material to load inside the glove box there are two different sizes of anti chamber present with this apparatus purging of the glove box is done with the help of vacuum pump in order to maintain a inert atmosphere throughout the glove box is supplied with argon gas from these cylinders on a continuous basis Based on loading capacity, ball milling can be industrial ball mill and laboratory ball mill. Laboratory ball mills can be planetary, rotary or vibratory type. Ball milling involves many parameters, milling time, milling speed, ball to powder weight ratio, ball and vial material type. Here we can see different types and sizes of vials and balls. This one is stainless steel, but it can also be made of tungsten carbide, zirconia, agate, etc., etc., depending on the hardness of the material. the ball and vial is chosen this here is a high energy planetary type ball mill of freeze make from this panel milling time and speed can be set the vial is attached through a clamp here in this uh, we can see this vial is made of tungsten carbide and we can also see that uh, the base panel is so connected that the base plate moves clockwise while the vial part can move anti clockwise direction which is showing that it's a planetary type generally ball milling is used to synthesize equilibrium and non equilibrium alloy phases usually at room temperature such as super saturated solid solution meta stable crystalline phases nano crystalline phases and even amorphous alloys alloy formation happens by mechanical action of repeated fracture and welding so this is the sample that was observed at 2 hours this was observed uh, at 5 hours and the, this one is 10 hours the evolution of its structure can be com confirmed from the xrd analysis and finally we can arrive which type of solid solution we require and we can achieve that although ball milling is easy to use on laboratory scale but the range of parameters is huge which poses two challenges firstly the comparison between studies from different types of ball milling machine is quite difficult Secondly the relationship between laboratory and industrial scale is not obvious but optimization of milling parameters could give a direction to industrial apparatus in our lab arc melting furnace is an instrument used for small scale synthesis of hydrogen storage alloys using different hydride forming elements the composition or sample to be melted is kept in water cooled copper hearth The heat required to melt metal is obtained via an electric arc established by contact between electrode basically tungsten and copper hearth. The energy required to form an alloy depends on its composition and quantity which is achieved by varying current in this instrument. For a given sample the repetitive melting of 3 to 4 times is performed to obtain homogeneous alloy. The arc melting furnace present in our lab is capable of synthesizing 25 grams of alloy in one batch. Vacuum induction furnace is based on two main principles: mutual induction and heating effects of electric current. A primary coil working at high voltage induces eddy current in the metals inside the furnace, which produces heat due to the resistance in the metals and causing them to reach their melting point and form alloys and compounds. Here We have a customized induction furnace that can produce temperatures in the range of 850 degrees Celsius to 2000 degrees Celsius. The constituents from which our material is to be made are first loaded in these special graphite crucibles. Depending on the mass of the material to be made, which can be from 200 grams up to 10 kg, we select a suitable crucible. This crucible is then placed in the furnace. 
In order to form the alloys and compounds, first a vacuum of about 10 power minus 6 millibar is produced inside the chamber using the rotary root and the diffusion pumps. Using the rotary root and diffusion pumps, then the high voltage supply induces current in these metals that is sufficient to produce enough heat that they reach their melting points. The molten metals mix into each other and form the desired material. The temperatures inside the crucible can be indirectly measured using the pyranometer attached to the chamber. The melt is then poured into copper mold to form ingots. The copper mold uses a flow of water typically maintained below 10 degrees Celsius for cooling these ingots. Here we have the chiller that produces the flow of cold water which is then fed into the furnace by means of these pipes that we see here. The formed ingots are then removed from the copper mold and then used in the systems. The capacity of hydrogen absorb or desorb in the alloy is measured by two techniques, gravimetric and volumetric. In our lab, we have three volumetric based homemade sievert apparatus ranging from low pressure systems to high pressure that is up to 150 bar. A sievert apparatus generally has three inlet outlet connecting to supply of hydrogen, inert gas and to a vacuum pump. The high vacuum pressure can be achieved via rotary and diffusion pump up to 10 to power minus 6 millibar. The change in hydrogen pressure is measured using a pressure transducer. A pressure transducer is calibrated to convert pressure reading into electrical signal which is further collected to a data logger. The pressure and temperature reading of each system can be seen on this panel which is a programming interface of a data logger. To analyze the behavior of the alloy, the alloy which were synthesized by arc melting or induction melting technique, then it is crushed into powder and placed into a sample holder as shown here. Depending on the nature of experiment to be performed on particular alloy, it can be loaded into the sample holder either in the glove box or in the open surroundings. The sample holder is then positioned at one end of the apparatus enabling us to provide heat treatment to the alloy. To perform experiment at high temperature, we use a portable heater that can go up to 1000 degrees Celsius. For experiments, hydrogen is filled into a standard reactor of known volume and pressure and released to a reactor site by opening these valves. The drop in pressure is then calculated for the hydrogen capacity of the alloy. This increase in temperature show exothermic reaction of the metal hydride. These apparatus can be used for absorption and desorption kinetic, pressure composition isotherm and cyclicity of the alloys. Now, after you have seen manual civets apparatus, this instrument in our lab is a fully automated volumetric sorption analyzer of Hyden isochema make. This instrument works on volumetric measurement principle wherein for a given known dosing and sample volume, the drop in hydrogen gas pressure is correlated with the amount of hydrogen absorbed or desorbed by an alloy. Few grams of synthesized sample is loaded in sample cell which is attached here to the instrument and following experiments can be performed. Pycnometry for determining the density of an alloy, rate kinetics for determining the rate of hydrogen absorption and desorption from an alloy, pressure composition temperature PCT measurement for determining the equilibrium pressure of alloy at different temperatures, analyzing the hysteresis, maximum as well as reversible gravimetric capacity and change in enthalpy and entropy of hydride formation. This instrument is also capable of performing cyclic life study of an alloy for 100 to 1000 cycles. The instrument in our lab can achieve a vacuum pressure up to 10 to the power minus 8 millibar using turbo molecular pump, dosing pressure up to 200 bar and sample temperature can be varied from room temperature to 500 degree Celsius. After synthesis of materials using ball milling, arc melting and induction melting, we will fabricate metal hydride reactor. In our lab, 
before fabricating and integrating a system according to their end use we will try to investigate the behavior of our metal hydride reactor by designing them mathematically using simulation software like comsol ansys and matlab during these simulation effect of various uh, parameters are uh, depicted on uh, hydrogen absorption and desorption besides this we also use various optimization technique using machine learning to optimize this system this simulation and optimization technique helps in saving time resources and cost for our lab the optimized system is then fabricated is scaling from 1 kg of metal hydride to 50 kg in uh, incorporating various heat transfer arrangement like embedded cooling tube metal hydride reactor hexagonal fin type of metal hydride reactor embedded tube type of metal hydride reactor with different uh, scaling sizes of uh, of metal hydride the modular type of metal hydride reactor according to their various application like heat pump heat transformer thermal energy storage etc the reactor shown here is modular type of metal hydride reactor used for power backup now as you can see we are dissolving hydrogen from this modular type of metal hydride reactor using sieve apparatus having mass flow meter that is recording mass flow rate and total mass of hydrogen dissolved using data logger the temperature inside the metal hydride reactor and the temperature of the water bath uh, are also recorded using a data logger after heating uh, after heating the metal hydride re reactor by the heat transfer fluid the hydrogen that is being dissolved from the from this metal hydride reactor is flow through that uh, through the sieve apparatus and then this hydrogen will flow to the fuel cell the hydrogen dissolved from metal hydride reactor is utilized by fuel cell wherein it converts the chemical energy of hydrogen into electrical energy powering a dc load the parameter such as voltage current and power is recorded in energy meter this completes the integration of metal hydride reactor with real time applications